Thank you for tuning into UTCR Live. Today we're here with an MOS Four Nations winner. We've got Adam Drummond in the studio with us today. So Adam, could you just start off by telling us a little bit about your achievements and a little bit about yourself? So I'm from the Isle of Man, which is a place a lot of people don't know about. Uh, I'm 17, I'm in year 12 at the moment, so studying A-levels. I got 10 GCSEs. I currently work at Costa, so that's quite fun and it means I know a lot about making drinks. So at the moment I'm studying maths, computer science, chemistry and enterprise at AS level and then it'll be A level soon. And I've been best in school three times at the UK Mathematical Trust Maths Challenge. And I'm a two time United Kingdom Microsoft Office Specialist Champion, even though I'm not from the UK. And I got third place at the World Championship in 2018, competing in Word 2016. And a fun fact about myself, which is something that's impossible in the UK, is I passed my driving test 23 days before my 17th birthday. So obviously you can't do that because you have to be 17 to learn. And just another thing about myself is I'm a volunteer at Alman Code Club and I wrote and taught my own course once. And that was quite a fun experience. Wonderful to hear. So how did you first get into MOSs and Microsoft certifications then? So it all started back in October, November 2017. We were offered to sit an exam in Microsoft Office and I thought, yeah, that would be a good thing I can do, put it on my CV. Didn't think it would go very far. I thought maybe I'd do quite good in school, maybe top 10. And then I got best in school with a score of 963. And from then it was just bang. I went to Alaman finals and I won that, despite not getting my best score. I only got 957, but still a good score. And I only did that in about 15 minutes, which included all the time I spent checking it and going over every question about three times. And then it was just on and on. 2018 in June, Design Museum, I won the UK finals. That was an experience because it was a boiling hot day, 21st of June. And they finished at about quarter past four. Our flight was at seven o'clock from Gatwick. So we had to run down Kensington High Street, we had about five or six bags, a giant boarding pass, which is upstairs somewhere, and an Xbox. And we were running down Kensington High Street. And I can't imagine what the people were thinking, just seeing someone running, like three people running along a street like that. And then we got on the wrong tube, so that went pretty well. From there, I was just addicted. It was the greatest feeling ever, just winning, meeting all the people. And so from there, Orlando, Florida, that was an amazing experience. I met so many people from companies like Microsoft, Adobe, Certiport, as well as amazing competitors from other countries, many, many of whom I'm still in touch with today. And to top it off, I came third, so that was great. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see my medal now on the screen. If not, it's basically a bronze medal, bronze medal, orange lanyard, it's a really cool thing that I've got. And so that was 2018. But then the feeling was so good. I competed again in 2019 and that was in Excel. And the day before entries closed, which would have been the 9th of March, 9th of May, I got a full 1000 score the day before. And that was just the best thing ever. I just remember seeing the 1000 pop up on screen. I was just like, wow, I've done it. A few days later, I think it might have been, I remember it was a sunny day because I was outside and I got an email from my teacher from the Prodigy just and with the confirmation that I got into the UK finals. So that was fun. That was at British Library last year and then I won that again. So that was fantastic. And I managed to get to New York City for the world finals once again. Now that was completely different, but again, I met even more amazing people, a lot of them I still talk to today. And unfortunately, I didn't get a medal. I came sixth in the world at Excel, which is still good, considering like you have hundreds of thousands, probably millions of people who use Excel. And after I returned from each championship, so in 2018 from Word and I in 2019 from Excel, I sat the expert exams which in Word I got a score of 888, so that's actually my worst score on an exam. And Excel I got 925, and I sat that exam three days before schools closed, so that was really close. 
And now in the future, I'm looking to sit PowerPoint. I've done the whole course and I'm also learning access so I can become a MOS master. Absolutely wonderful there. So often Word is seen sort of like quite quite a simple tool that everyone just sort of uses to type up documents. What are some of your favourite features of it and what have you particularly learned about to become a master? So it was kind of a surprise. I, I, I'm, I've i been using Word for years. I remember using Word 2007. It was horrible. And I had that until a week before my Word 2016 exam, at which point school said, everyone on the Isle of Man who's in education can get Microsoft Office for free. So I did. And I doubt without that I'd have done anything I am today because I learned the whole course in a week because I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't got the programme. So a week before the exam, I fired up learn key videos. They've been the best things ever. And geometric practice tests. Learned the whole programme in a week, which I was happy about because it, it proves that you can do it. I learned it all in a week. And the one thing I've done is just gone over all the features, looking at them all, and I've just really enjoyed using it. So brilliant then. Out of the whole Microsoft Office suite, what what feature would you say is, is the weirdest, just completely out of place? So the one thing that confuses me the most, now obviously I know Word and Excel the most because those are what I've competed in, gone through every menu. The things that confuse me the most is the Excel data model and cube functions. They just really confuse me. And I can remember flying into Orlando, not Orlando, into New York, Fly, it must have been near to America. We were flying over, I think it might have been over land at that point. I just remember having my laptop up with some fake data I'd got, just trying to understand them, trying and trying, because I didn't know if they'd be on the final exam in America. Luckily for me, never had never had to use them for the exam or for the Excel ex expert exam, but maybe that was just me. Um, and what would you say your favourite feature is out of everything? So one of my favourite things to do is using custom themes to make documents the same. So I had, I remember I did, I had some coursework on digital applications where we had to make a load of products and we, I, we had to write really long documents in everything we did. I can't remember how long mine was, but I remember people, someone had one that was like 150 pages maybe, or like over 10,000 words. And because there's multiple documents, I remember just using the same style set, same background colour, same border, same font on all of them. And that was just amazing. And then that, so obviously that works for all programmes, but mainly is what I'd use in Word. Whereas though Excel, I love really long formulas that are just like formula inside a formula inside a formula, which uses lots of different functions to come up with one final number in the end. And I just love when it comes together and it works and you don't get an error. And, and what, what were your experiences like at the uh, the Four Nations and the World Championships? So obviously I've said before they were amazing. I met loads of people. I think one of the big things I just need to say is that Prodigy and Certiport do great jobs with these events and they should just keep it up because without them I wouldn't be where I am today. And I think a key thing is that they're student focused. So it's like, although so uh, Prodigy hosts Certain Matters Live, which I've never actually been to the Educator Conference before this year, but it's actually really cool. And although they do that, a lot of the stuff is focused on the students, I believe, I feel. Like they put student events on and it's just a really fun day where you get to meet a load of different people from all over the country, Ireland, and even people who go to universities that are from outside of the UK, but study in the UK. And then the World Championships, they have a party on the Sunday night and that's just the best thing ever and I'm really going to miss it this year. But I think one of the key things is they love to recognise students for all their achievements. So like in America, they do a parade of champions, they call it, which is where everyone from every country goes up, walks across the stage, reads out their name, holds up a flag if they've got one and you just get a photo taken and it's like the best feeling ever, being able to look at it, share it, remember it. And also you get to establish new contacts. So when I was in New York City, I met Anthony Salcito and that was just amazing. But I've also met loads of people, like I said before, from Adobe, from Microsoft. 
and even just from like Autodesk as well. I've met someone from Autodesk, which I wasn't expecting. So, of course, you said that you have uh, grown up on the Isle of Man. What, what was it actually like there? How would you say it would differ from almost like traditional life? So I think it's really cool. Like It's sort of shelter from the world. We're a really small place. We're only 13 miles wide by 33 high, 33 long. So it's like not big. But surprisingly, when I tell people about it, people say, oh, do you know everyone? And like, there's over 80,000 people here. I definitely don't know them all. But one thing that's important to know is that word spreads quickly. You can't do something here without it being known about everyone. If you do something good or something bad, everyone's going to know about it because the news will share anything. There was a news story back, must have been a month or two before everything shut down, about a man who was in Tesco, bumped into his ex and he got annoyed with them, so he threw a bottle of Ribena at them and poured it over them. Uh, that made the news. So it's not just a sort of basic, yeah, it's a small island, you know everyone, everything's fine. There is some really weird things. But it's a really good talking point, especially with the flag, because in America nobody knew about the flag and they were like, wow, what's that cool flag? And then they would always call me Mr. Isle of Man because I was always walking around with the flag. And I remember in 2019, they were just amazed when I got their back. But there are some things that aren't the best. Like if the weather's bad, if it's windy for multiple days, there'll be no food potentially. Tes there's only there's Tesco, which is our main supermarket. We have a few. We have a Manx chain called Shoprite, which sells some more Manx food, but still a lot of imported food. And we have co-ops and spas. But if there's if the boat doesn't go because the weather's bad, there's no food. There'll be no newspapers. And one of the things you'll hear about, if you complain about anything, people always say there's a boat in the morning, which implies that you can just leave whenever you want, which you can leave at the moment, you can't get back. But I think one of the other things that's really cool is you can learn to drive at 16. So whilst a lot of people in the UK won't even le start learning until they're in sixth form, I'd passed my test two months into sixth form. And I know a lot of people who passed before they started sixth form, so they've been able to drive to school, which is quite fun. And to people who are visiting the Isle of Man after lockdown, of course, what, what places would you recommend they visit? So there's a lot to do on this small island. So if you're into ice cream, which I am, and I know a lot of people are, visiting Davison's Ice Cream Parlour in the west of the island in Peel is just the best thing ever, especially if you go towards the end of a clear day, you'll just see some of the most amazing sunsets ever. And it's just a really good feeling you can get a pack you can get uh, some chips have an ice cream and just watch the sunset without anything in the way you can sit around we've got there's a castle there there's a path around it if you walk around it you can just sit there and watch the sunset just for like hours obviously not for hours because it'll be gone eventually but you can just sit there and watch and um if you're into good views, we've got one mountain that you can climb or you can take the tram up of it in summer. And <clears throat> it's the only place where you can see, I believe they say the seven kingdoms, Ireland, England, Wales, Scotland, sky, sea and the Isle of Man. On a clear day, you can see all of them. And it's the only place. But there's also a lot more. We've got a lot of history sites on Ireland, the Manx National Heritage which is like castles, old buildings, and just anything a historian would love. And if you're into your bikes, we have the World Renowned TT every year, except for this year, which is where people come. I believe it's like the population gets multiplied by one and a half because of the amount of people that visit us. And it just, it's like one of the main money things for the island where we get a lot of people coming and it's literally, if I look out my window, I can see a house across the street. And if that house wasn't there, I'd be able to see the course. It literally goes over normal roads. And like I said before, if you climb the mountain, the mountain road is one of the main attractions people come to see if they're into the bikes. And they'll just, because there's no speed limit here, no, unless, except for at the moment, there's no national speed limit. You can do whatever's safe. So we, there's people who drive over 100 mile an hour down across the mountain because they can. In a, in a lot of your photos that you could find on the internet, you'll have the, the flag of the Isle of Man. Do you know what the three legs on it mean? So 
to those of you who are watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the flag behind me. And for those of you who don't, who aren't watching on YouTube and are actually listening, it's a red flag and it's got the thing on it we call the free legs of man. So it's a Triskelion. Now, there's a fun fact about this. Nobody actually knows what where they came from. It's been around for years, but nobody knows how they came to be on a flag. However, our motto, which is in Latin, translates to whithersoever you throw it, it will stand, which basically means however you throw us, we will always land on our feet and be resilient. So I think that's a really cool thing to be able to say. And it's just a cool design as well. And what does the flag mean to you personally? So my flag, the one that I've got specifically, it means everything to me. It's been to Orlando, it's been to New York, it's always been with me. And just when I hold it, it brings back memories of when I was winning, when I was with amazing people. And it's in so many of my photos, as you said, and it just, it's sort of like a symbol of where I came from. And I remember I'd wear it like a cloak around me, which is in some of my photos. And it just reminds me of being with people from all over the place, despite the fact that there's so many miles between us, we're still friends. And and you've said you're quite an avid radio enthusiast. What What's the appeal of radio to you? And is, is there, are there many radio enthusiasts on the Isle of Man? So back in 2017, it was, this was at the Code Club. So this was sort of, we've been going six years now. And I started off there very much as a student, sort of learning how to code. And it's sort of where I got interested in computers back in year six, so a long time ago. And we've been in loads of different locations. And one of them, we had a guy who gave us the opportunity to do a course to gain an amateur radio license. So I did the foundation license because that's the first one. So that was back in 2017. And I remember we'd go down, it would be a Sunday morning at like, it was really early, it was nine o'clock and it was down south. So it's like half an hour drive to get there, which I remember used to be a pain getting there every, cause it would be twice a week. Cause I'd go once on the Saturday for the code club and then on the Sunday for the course on radio. I remember I failed it the first time, which really pained me. But then the second time around, it was a few months later because I kept missing one session or there was one session I couldn't do every time so I couldn't sort of take part in it but I passed it with flying colours only dropping two marks a second time and the thing I really enjoy is that I can just be like I don't have a radio at the moment because I never bought my own I was just lending one from a friend and it's just really cool that I can speak to random people like even people in England could hear me because there's ways you can do it using an app as well but even if the internet doesn't work, you can still speak to people over the radio. And I remember, I haven't done it in a while because as I, said, I don't have a radio, but I looked back at my logs from back when I first passed in 2017 and there's some really random stuff in there, which I don't have a clue what it means anymore, but I just know it means something. And I remember reading it, I feel like there was someone who passed it 50 years ago and I was just like, You've been doing it a lot longer than me. But on Ireland, I know there's quite a few, but personally, I know maybe four people personally, but you hear about other people and one of the best things that you can see, like now I understand radio. I know when people say 73s, that actually means best wishes. So I'll see on Facebook, someone will say 73s Nigel, because there's a guy I know called Nigel. And a lot of people wouldn't have a clue what that means, but I know it means best wishes. Brilliant. And hopefully not all of your time is consumed through Microsoft Office and its products. What are your, some of your other general interests just as a human being? So like I mentioned earlier, I work at Costa. So normally that would be one day a week extra during half terms and school holidays, which unfortunately they're missing now because they're closed. But one of one of our ones here opened yesterday and it was just the best feeling ever getting back to get a drink. But aside from that, I also, like I mentioned, I do some volunteering at Code Club. So I've done some teaching, I support other people, I've done some learning. And I've also, as part of that, written my own course in Visual Basic, which 
I'm finishing off right now and it's almost done and I'd love to be able to share it somehow. But I'm also going to convert it into a C-sharp course because I believe that that's more well used. So people will be able to see that from following me on Twitter and Instagram. But I think another thing I really love, and I think the World Championships have really helped this, is socialising with people because we have group chats from the World Championship. And I can remember some nights I'd stay up really late just messaging people from all over the world because whilst for me it's half 11 at night, for them it's five or six in the evening and they've just finished their online school because they have video lessons, whereas though I just get it all on Google Classroom. But that's another thing I really enjoy six for at the moment because everything, well, before everything shut down, it was a really great experience just getting to go there every day, especially we have a recently renovated six for hub and that's just such a nice place to be. And just to finish off then, is there anything you want to say to our listeners, anything you want to plug? So to see more of my life on the Isle of Man, I mean, it's a very different place, or to see photos and stories from my adventures in uh, in MOS, so in England and in America, or just ask me any other questions, you can follow my Instagram and Twitter. Now, it's a bit of an odd spelling, but it's M-I-S-T-A underscore K-O-O-1. I've had it for years. And just one thing I'd finally like to say to people is do not be afraid to take opportunities because maybe you could end up like me competing in America even when I'm from such a small place because the fact is I'm competing I believe in 2018 I was competing against 750,000 people in the world and then last year there was 850,000 people entered now that's 10 times the population of the Isle of Man which I think is crazy. And I just know that if I had, hadn't chosen to do the Microsoft certification back in year 10, I would not be where I am today. I believe everything would be different. And finally, I'd just like to say thank you. Of course, and thank you for coming on the show, Adam. It's been absolutely wonderful having you.